Hello, beautiful souls. How are you? Today is the 1010 portal day. It's also the morning after Hurricane Milton came ashore in Florida. And we already have a lot of beings trying to recover from Hurricane Helene in several southeastern states. So I want to take a moment to send you all my love, healing energy, and to remind you to stay focused on Source Creator. I know in those times, I myself have lived through many hurricanes, uh, Katrina, Rita, Gustav, um, Harvey in Houston, lots of flooding, lots of devastation, all things in my instance, I could find the silver lining. I could find the light and try to focus on that. I know there's many, many instances of darkness, but do try to find the light and focus on that if you can. Today's video is going to be giving you the sixth ray of devotion with Archangel Uriel. Let's dig in. Archangel Uriel, his name means light of God, our fire of God. He's also known as Ariel, angel of wisdom, truth, and light associated with light, lightning and thunder, and is said to have the power to manipulate dreams, teleport, and use telekinesis. Now, I'm going to pause here for a minute. When, when I read manipulate dreams, I immediately thought that's not the right word. And it's really not. It's it's contact via the dream space showing you the messages in a safe space, in the dream space. And so I don't really see that as manipulation, but it is entering your dream space. And that will only occur when a being invites it. Law of consent. Many religious Many religions idolize Uriel, believing he is the one and only contact to God, God directly. In truth, we all have direct contact to source creator. I don't use the word God because it has been part of the dark agenda to get a lot of people to focus on God when they really have the, the underlining and intent to honor gods of the underworld or different gods that are deities. And so I make it very clear source creator, prime creator is who I'm talking about. Now we can have that direct relationship with source, with mother Sophia, with your archangels without any, uh, memorized prayers, holy rosaries, um, without any of the indoctrination or, or dogma that accompanies religions. Because our relationship with source is ours. It is independent of any of that. And there are so many people I feel that that feel unworthy because that's what the religion tells them, that they're unworthy to have this relationship with source creator. And that's just simply not true. Um, his energy and love and nurturing and compassion for you is always present. He's just waiting on you to accept him the way that it is. But this does foster that when you, when you enter into these original organic relationships with source creator, you have to go through a certain level of shadow work because he's not inciting fear he's not wrathful he's not vengeful he's none of that in fact there's been times like we've had several battles where source reluctantly steps in because he doesn't want to be in that role but there are some that push him to make actions to make decisions and i see him i see i feel and i see the energy of him struggle with that because he is loving and nurturing and compassionate and forgiving and all can be forgiven but some don't want any part of that they just want to battle now the sixth ray of devotion with archangel uriel bestows the qualities of persistence 
unwavering focus and intensity of feeling. It is a gift of strength to move mountains with your will for what you love. Love is the strongest force. Love is the strongest energy and love can move mountains. And if that mountain is whatever that big obstacle is in your life, so be it. I ask you to tap into love versus force. It's much more effective. Okay. When the sixth ray of devotion appears, you're being given guidance that even if you do not seem to have much worldly power right now, the power of your beliefs can conquer obstacles. Absolutely. The Archangel Uriel helps you receive the blessing of the sixth ray now. This is all about believing in your passion and desires and having true faith that when you ask for assistance, that faith is enough to allow yourself to receive it. There's many that, that don't even go through the steps of asking because they are convinced that they're unworthy because of the people exterior to them, usually beating them over the head with the Bible, telling them that they're not worthy. And that's just not true. It's a common issue. We go through this in, in life. We give to such a degree that it causes an imbalance. And that's really a lot of the dogma that gets pushed. It pushes you to give, 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 and stretch yourself out so very, very thin in an effort to be worthy when you were worthy from the moment you arrived in this dimension. And what does that do? Why would they do that to us? You may say, well, it keeps you um, strapped, right? It keeps you in a fear state. It keeps you wanting to please and manipulatable for sure. You are receiving the blessing of the sixth ray of devotion. It is serving your soul growth and will help you develop faith in your principles and trust in the power of your beliefs. You will be able to recognize and appreciate the extraordinary strength within you and realize that you have enough willpower to keep working towards your dream and overcoming any obstacle until you are divinely successful. I don't know that you hear that in congregations. I wouldn't know. I haven't been in one several years. That's pretty motivating, I would think. The sixth ray reminds you of the power of love which can conquer anything and everything. Love. As a side note, we as a crew, as a ground crew, were guided many months back. I think it's actually coming up on a year to start to tap into that love power, that love frequency. And we were guided to do it in love waves. And so we would gather together on Telegram in our group at a certain time. And we would ask, what is our focus of this love wave. If we didn't have one, we just sent love out. It cannot harm. And we started to do that. And, you know, the first time it, it felt kind of good, felt very powerful. And we was like, we're going to do this more. So it wasn't in initially, it wasn't a daily thing, but it was, became more and more frequent. Now, probably the last six months, we do a love wave every single night. And we do continue them because we get such positive feedback from other intergalactic beings and emissaries that represent different star systems and planets throughout our universe and other universes. We get feedback from the archangels and they tell us how beautiful it is that they see these infinity of colors rippling through the universe. We get gratitude back that that push of positive energy helps to um, align or cleanse certain areas. Like that's what they needed. And I think about it sometimes, like all you need is love. It sounds in the world that we live in today. It sounds a little sure, right? But I've seen it. I've felt it. I invite you to try. All you need is love. Love is an empowering, motivating force far stronger than fear. Look that up. Look up the frequency of fear. Look up the frequency of love. 
big difference. I've done videos on it. They're in my, um, in my library. Okay. Love is the foundation of authentic spiritual devotion. Devotion to the divine empowers us to bear burdens, overcome obstacles, and manifest all manners of beautiful visions in the world that may at first assure us that our dreams are not possible. Meaning the world may assure you that your dream is just too lofty, too big, but love assures you that it is worth it. In reality, nothing is impossible. In reality, we are infinite, multidimensional beings, and we have power beyond comprehension in this now moment. The sixth ray bless you with spiritual stubbornness. I have that. And sacred rebellion against any odds. I definitely have that. I fit that description. The challenge with the sixth ray is not to become so anchored in your beliefs that you become fanatical judging others because their beliefs are different my nose it just someone's trying to come through okay yes and this particular piece i'm going to read it again because i personally do struggle with this from time to time and it's mostly because i do encounter probably above average attacks because of what I do, because I literally have spent two years making videos, divide, divinely guided videos of this is what the collective needs to hear. And I do it out of compliance with my mission, love of source creator and wanting to help the collective. And I get attacks from the dark all the time. Do I care? I care. I sure wish it would stop. I retaliate when I need to. Most of the time, the archangels handle it for me. They're a very effective force to be reckoned with. So I do struggle with this though, because I like the human part of me says, if I'm nothing, if what I say doesn't matter, which is what I get a lot. Um, if I'm just a big fraud, I get that too. Then why do you try so hard? Why do you spend so much energy month after month after month after month after month sending negative energy attacks to me? Seems a little odd if I'm so insignificant, which I'm not insignificant. So because you've seen the downsides of the paths of, you know, people, beings, when they get a little lofty, they get a little ego attachment where they kind of only half ass deal with their ego. And then their ego jumps right back on their shoulders when they don't have anything else to do. And they're like, hey, guess what? You don't need to be doing this. They're blah, 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 blah. <laughs> like, I don't know what they say. Anyway, because we live in this duality planet, it is a thing. It is a problem that most of the time we have kind of created in our engagements with people because we're human we make mistakes we make bad choices sometimes we're, we are also led by ego and what is in the exterior of us right instead of within so we all had to go through this learning gap and everybody gets there in different spaces and judgment for me was a big issue prior to my clearing. Like that's one of the biggest issues of my shadow work journey is not being judgmental of others. And so I do have to pause, recenter myself with earth, with source, really clear my pillar and then go at it from a love perspective not a mind perspective, from a love perspective. And that's when you really tap into unity consciousness frequency, right? Because even when someone or person, place, or thing does something against you, it's more important how you react to the action because we don't control other people, right? And so to put that in practice, it's obviously easier said than done. When it's you, you have to really rein that in and go, you know, hurt people 
hurt other people. And some beings, that's their actually their role because they're NPCs or they're organic portals or they've traded their soul for power and they're going to do exactly what they're told to do. And so there's a different level of understanding, compassion and kindness. And then retaliating in love has worked very well, I will say. You can be unwavering in your adherence to your belief system and yet honor the fact that there are as many paths to divine union as there are people. That the ways of the universe cause you home to love and they are unlimited number of ways. So there's a lot of different ways to get to the next dimension, to transcend this dimension and get to the next dimension. There's a lot of ways to not get to the next dimension as well. So what end of the, of the spectrum do you want to be on? It's up to you. This is a rampant occurring phenomenon though. Right now in the spiritual religious community. And I first experienced it as a child. Okay. Where every religion that I had access to, because I had family members that were different religions. And I could hear it was not a secret that, you know, this branch of the family that was Catholic was super judgmental of this branch of the family that was Baptist and the Baptists were super judgmental of everyone. And, and there were all these different infighting of the religion. So the ones that I have firsthand knowledge of doing this Baptist, Catholic, Methodist, Pentecostal, and Jehovah's witness at the end of the day, they're all judging each other for loving God. Think about that. You have to understand, understand, we are all individual energy bodies. We come to this life having experienced many, many, many lives. Very rarely does someone come into this life really, really new as a soul. In fact, you can't. You have to go through other dimensions before you get here. That being said, there is more than one way to honor God, source creator, prime creator. So they're all judging each other for finding their own way to source. And I truly believe the bulk of the people in the congregations of all these different religions are there for the right reason. It's always that handful, right? That handful that are so in their ego and they're so power hungry and they're super judgmental and they foster all the things that rob a soul of light. So that's where you have to know how to traverse that. If you do not honor the fact that there are many ways to the divine, you may try to pull people from their own path. Don't do what you've been doing your whole life. Do what I say do. Because I believe it's great and wonderful, which is true. I do believe my path right now is great and wonderful for me and for many others, but it's not for everyone. It just isn't. That's okay. I accept it. I am not trying to pull someone and uh, coerce them away from what they're doing. It has to be free will choice. Those that are really strong arming the collective and putting them in a fear state and, and, and shoveling out all this blame and guilt and shame and all of that. I want you to hear this and hear this. Well, if you do not honor this, you may try to pull people from their own path, which can create unnecessary struggle for them and unnecessary karma for you. There is always the, the balance has to be maintained. I can provide information to you. It's up to you what you do with it. I have no control over that, nor do I want to. I want you to sit with the information and, and meditate on it and determine what it means for you. And then if it isn't pushing you, you're feeling led to engage with me. I want you to do that of your own free will. This doesn't work any other way. It has to be of your own free will. I'm not judging anyone for that. 
I'm simply saying when we exert our free will and we're allowing our ego to push it, you're teetering on the edge of incurring negative karma. So I recommend not doing that. This happens time and time again. They know or they ignore the consequences of that and they do it anyway. Again, that is the ego saying those rules don't apply to us, but they do. The best way to honor the blessing and minimize the challenge of this ray is to share your truth with an open heart and an open mind. Big caveat there. Big caveat. Share without an agenda. That is huge. That means that you are willing to put yourself out there, speak your truth, honor your power and your sovereignty. And I want you to, I want you to honor the work that you have done to pull yourself up out of the ashes and rise as the Phoenix that you are. I want you to be proud of that. I want you to share that story. You never know what, what little mustard seed out of that will help someone. It may not be anything that you ever, ever see or have knowledge of. You may never know the effect, positive, positive effect that you have on someone's life by showing what authentic sovereignty looks like when you speak your truth without any agenda to how that is received because we don't control other people. I feel like I have to keep saying that because it is such a, like we are surrounded by beings who think they can control us and definitely try a lot. So we have to really keep it real, okay? It's part of the spiritual path that when you get to a certain point, when you come through the fog, you know, like the, the smoke and flames of your life, when you realize that everything you were taught by and, by and large was based on lies and had an alternative agenda to keep you in a fear state so that you were easy to man manipulate but now you know who you are and now you know why you volunteered to come here for this life and now you realize what your mission is and you are on fire you are on fire to tell the world and you don't care what they say about you because you've done your shadow work and your ego is tamed sitting in the back seat quiet that is when you're at your most powerful and we don't react when those hear the truth get triggered we just simply say this triggering is a good thing it means you exactly know where to go and start your shadow work it is a pin on the map of your soul do you want some support while you do that i'll hold space for you that is unity consciousness try it it's it's wonderful we have been called to share our truth freely, the truth that we discover along the way of our own spiritual journey via shadow work. This can set others free as well. Things, when we clear our throat chakra by speaking our truth, we are also clearing our consciousness. We're not holding that in. I invite you to do that. Even if it's out in the woods on a walk, at the park, alone. It might be in the bathroom, in the mirror. It might be in the car when you're by yourself. Just practice speaking your truth. I don't want you to sound scripted in any way when people ask you a question like you're reading off of a cue card because that's not authentic. But I want you to realize how far you've come. How much energy you put into yourself. Realizing who you are. Realizing your powers, your gifts, your clear abilities fostering that clear energy, enforcing boundaries, that is all worth celebrating, even if you are the only one clapping for you. You're not maybe the only human you see clapping for you. But if you're Claire audience, you're going to hear the angels and the archangels and all of your guides clapping for you because that is what they want for you. To know your power, stand in your power and be sovereign, loving, being so when we clear that out it is super healthy for us and it's also super motivating for those who also have that issue speaking their truth they're like huh it is possible they didn't just like burst into flame they didn't get attacked 
actually nobody really knows to do with truth. We're kind of stunned. And then you just let it go. You give them love and let them go about their blessed journey with zero attachment to what they do with that information. This is another caveat to shadow work. We kind of get a little lofty in our, oh, look, this works for me. And this is what I want you to do. And, it, and then if someone says that doesn't really resonate with me, I don't want to do that. I've seen other people go, okay, hands off. They're not doing what their shadow work. No, they're just not doing what you want them to do. They're doing it different ways. Like not everybody can lay and, and meditate for 45 minutes. That's okay. Source says, when you do any activity that makes your soul sing and you lose track of time, you're meditating and you can set your intentions before gardening or painting or whatever, that all positive energy I create in this moment, I set the intention to do fill in the blank or I set my intention of this time that I'm going to spend doing whatever to get clarity on fill in the blank. It's so like, why didn't I think of that before? For those working with this energy, the power of mind and emotions will come into focus. You may need to channel your emotional and mental power into worthy projects or practice balancing your intensity with lightness of heart and playfulness. So you don't become harsh and disparaging. If things appear to not be working out the way that you believe they should, then your faith can remind you that love always finds a way. So that's your like loop-de-loop -loop around your ego judgment, blah, blah, blah. So you can be benevolent and you have this intent that you want to help foster some shadow work in someone in your life. And you finally muster up the gumption to speak your truth and you do so. And it kind of falls flat. Or maybe they say something that uh, prior to your shadow work would have really triggered you and you go, oh, well, that's not how I want this received. Then you have to do the LFG of that because we don't control them. We control ourselves. So we give ourselves love for showing up, forgiveness for being judgmental for a half second, Gratitude for having grown and being able to be the new you that is not triggered by someone else's opinion and giving them love along their journey and let it go. Let it go. It does not need to be a, a thorn in your skin unless you put it there. Love does always find a way. Love is a powerful force. And when used with clear intent in all arenas, love wins and love is the key. We used to get sometimes just one word messages. Love is the key. And it was usually in times where things were really dark and there was a lot of attacks and the human in all of us wanted um, something other than love. And we would ask, what's our highest and best good next best step? Love is the key. And it takes a little bit to get there. Like your mind accepts it. You're like, yeah, yeah, I've, I've heard that before. And your heart goes, there's something to that. And then you got to do the work to get there to be fully, fully on board with it. When Archangel Uriel connects with you, a tremendous power, the power of earth, is brought to your aid. Uriel brings healing energy and the ability to cause real effects in the physical world with your mental and emotional power. And this is a huge benevolent force. Huge. So all the people that love to discount Earth's power or the tree's power or the power of the elements, big mistake. Remember, you are here to shine your light. Others can choose to use your light to see until they are ready to discover their own inner light. It's not anything you need to worry about unless you are surrounded by energy vampires and you're the only one doing the work because then you need to enforce your boundaries. It's not about them. It's about you. Simply live your truth. Trust in your heartfelt beliefs and devote yourself to love at all costs. 
this is where your healthy boundaries come in, right? So in the action that speaking your truth, that leaves you vulnerable and it leaves you open to energy vampires. It leaves you open to psychic attack. It leaves you open to a space where you have to remind yourself that love is the key and do your blocking of people that are not good for you, not in your highest and best cut cords, heal the attachments at both ends. The archangels help us with that because uh, at the end of the cord, not your end, the other end of the cord, it's open and it needs to be cut from them, healed and sealed. So not another energy vampire can take advantage of that opening. Once you seal that and you're healed from that and you do the shadow work of, with it, you want to protect that beautiful light that we are. That's when it really comes home. When I'm talking to a client and they're new to all this and they're trying to understand that they're energy and then they start to put the pieces together that, oh yeah, when I'm around this and this and this and this, I feel really depleted. But when I engage with this and this, I feel really charged. And then it becomes important that they really enforce their boundaries. And that's another level of shadow work because most of the time they're people pleasers and they have a hard time saying no. Finally, as the six ray has a special connection to religion and love, you are asked to hold the healing power of love in your heart for all those who are evolving through a life experience involving all religious practices. This can help counterbalance the judgment and fear that exists within them. Yes. Religion is man-made and they have an agenda because the men in power a long time ago, most of them were bishops in, in um, service to the Vatican and other offshoots of various religions. They all lead back to the Vatican they edited their judgment and fears and um, positions into the books and then they held you accountable for not towing that line control through fear is what they all have in common in the hearts of many are judgment fear in regards to many religions this indoctrination fuels judging others that are not of their own or that have been in a vehicle through which abuse has taken place. This is a fact. This is a fact. You can look at the letters in red. Old Testament is very supportive of abuse. And that is not love. And that is not from source creator. That is absolutely dark aligned to the gods of the underworld. And you have to like rehabilitate yourself from that fear and pull yourself out of that because that's not true. That's not true love. And that is not what source offers us. Religion on this planet at this time needs love, support, compassion, encouragement to evolve, heal, and grow in whatever way ultimately serves divine love. See, it's the walking of the walk, right? Walking the talk. That's really difficult for those that are full of indoctrination and dogma because they too live under that cloak of fear. And I've had many, many be very, very judgmental of my choices in my life. And they're feel emboldened by that good book, that good book full of lies. And I quickly say, look, I will discuss true energy with you and I'll discuss the divine with you and I'll discuss creator with you, but I'm not going to debate Bible verses that were man-made because it's lies, by and large lies. And they don't know what to do without throwing Bible verses that are manipulated and full of fear-mongering at people that's why people that remember and memorize all these bible verses and throw them at people that's their defense they feel completely in emboldened to do that and 
the word, the words that we get from source creator, direct from source creator, are not weapons. They are not weapons. And they are wrapped in love, fully nurturing and compassionate to whatever we're going through in the moment. And he experiences life through an extension of all of us because we are source. He experiences those that are judging us. He understands fully and completely what that is about. Unfortunately, many are so rooted in the lies of their foundational religion that they refuse to allow in any new information that can foster such evolution to love. We send them love in the desires to free them from the limits of their egoic minds. When you're ready to accept Archangel Uriel's six ray of devotion, set your intentions to accept it now. And I will use my soul name and title. If you, you know your soul name, I recommend you using that. If you don't, just use your earthly name. We know who you are. <laughs> the divine knows who you are. Your energy signature is yours and yours alone. I, Queen Andalusia of Royal Orders and Spiritual Gifts of my own free will, accept the blessing and grace of the sixth ray of devotion and its blessings of will, strength, purpose, and the miraculous power of loving belief. I invite the genuine, unconditionally loving masters and archangels, including Uriel, Yeshua, Magdalene, Ascendant Master Mary, to assist me and all beings on this earth in integrity. I choose to keep my mind open and my heart soft, my will powerful and my actions true. Many and may kindness prevail and passionate idealize, idealism, sorry, be tempered, be merciful for the greatest good of all. So be it. I didn't know a whole lot about Archangel Uriel, I'll be honest. And to date, up until this very moment, I have not tried to connect with Archangel Uriel much, um, but I will be. That is on my list of beings to ask Mother Sophia to grant me permission to connect to. She is uh, one of my many gatekeepers to make sure that I only connect those that are of the divine, that are benevolent and I do want to ask some very um, deeper questions of Archangel Uriel. So if you are interested in being able to have these conversations, to be able to be clear and keep your energy clear, um, to rid your vortex of energy vampires and make sure that you're not being sabotaged, stop by violetlotusenergy.com, schedule your QET session, and let's get you on the road to clarity. So that you too can realize that love is the most benevolent, powerful, all inspiring divine power that there is. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.